as coral reef biologists, we're always faced with this really hard reality that the thing that we're studying is dying at a really rapid rate. This is a question we get asked all the time. If I'm not being affected myself right now, why should I care about coral reefs? The big advantage of being on Coconut Island is that we have corals and fresh seawater right next to us so we can really be opportunistic and stay in touch with these reefs that we're working on. We have a, a great variety of projects happening at any one time in our lab and science is really a lot of grunt work, on the ground, repetitive, kind of nitty gritty type stuff. We have a strong core of staff members who are here full time working on a variety of different questions. We also require a lot of hands, and so the volunteer community that we have around here is really fantastic for helping us. Kaneohe Bay is one of the best studied coral reefs in the world. And part of the reason that we want to study these corals is because they already have this kind of natural capacity to deal with stress. And we think that by trying to take advantage of that, it will help us understand how corals in general have a capacity to understand stress. Really what we've seen in the last 30 years is very rapid degradation of coral reefs worldwide. What we've seen is that there are coral individuals that are really capable of handling high stress. And that's been the real bright spot in a lot of this research. What we now need to understand is how to harness that potential from those really high performers and enhance the resilience of the reef as a whole. So already this summer, the temperatures have started to get pretty warm in Kaneohe Bay, and we are expecting that there's going to be another bleaching event this year. And you can see this individual coral here is pretty susceptible to thermal stress. So this one is already quite pale. It's lost some of its pigmentation in these parts. And this guy is now metabolically compromised. It can't get all the nutrition it needs just from feeding. So if it doesn't recover those symbionts after the water cools back down, this colony will die. And as climate change continues to make the summer peak temperatures we have more severe and more frequently high, uh, more and more corals like this bleach, and that's how we lose our coral reefs. For me, you know, having never been diving in Hawaii before I showed up here, coming out here and like, you know, seeing right here on the ground what a coral bleaching event looks like, what recovery can look like, is a really exciting thing. But the real key is that every ecosystem is connected to the ones near it and none of this is happening in a vacuum. So while people might not live immediately next to a reef, they do live in an environment, whether or not they feel like it affects them, that is influencing their quality of life, their style of life, and a lot of the different things they do. So people who don't live next to a reef might not be able to go out and see it and understand that a bleached coral is compromising the structure and the function, but it will and it connects to every other ecosystem in the world.